Right, so we've talked enough about the theory and the uh, concepts behind shader programming. I actually figured I would show some uh, real, world, like, r real world examples here. So what I've done here is opened up a new blank scene in Virto Studio. And what I'm going to do here is just create a simple sphere. And we are going to um, essentially create or edit the simple shader for this sphere. So what I'm going to do here is I click the material, go to shader in the inspector panel and just click new shader and type test. And once I hit enter, uh, I'm presented essentially with what is the default template shader, which performs very, very, let me center this properly real quick. View centered selection. which basically creates um, simple lighting around the surface, so or on the surface. Um, so what you're given here is a default vertex shader and a default fragment shader that you can edit. Um, what I'd like to do just to start out is to delete some of this stuff um, just to kind of get into that same mode we were with the slides that I had. So basically I'm going to delete everything except the in, the invec 4 position the use of that model view projection matrix I talked about and with the colors I'm going to delete all input variables just have that out vec for frag color I was talking about and set this equal to basically a constant color and now basically what we have is we have a you know what will make this make more sense if I actually shrunk this window down like this and that way when I center it actually center properly. So now basically what I've done here is I have a very very basic shader that uses the um, model view projection matrix in the shader or in the vertex stage to properly transform the points to where they should belong and the uh, in the fragment stage or fragment shader all I do is set it equal to the constant color of red. Um, so that's the most basic shader you can have, um, at least for 3D. Now, um, introducing some of the stuff I was talking about before, if I wanted to do something in here uh, more interesting, I could take, for example, uh, my own uniform and declare it, just call it solid color, and I can create an output of the vertex stage. Uh, I'll just call this um, vertex color and then I create the output of the um, vertex stage to become the input to the fragment stage and instead of using a constant color I just use the input and now basically all I need to do is set the vertex color in the fra uh, in the vertex shader and I basically have it so of course I could again set it equal to a constant like green for example or I could set it equal to that solid color that I have set in the uniform um, variable here which of course is the shader argument once I've done that I could actually go to the um, material properties and I could actually edit it here in the shader uniform input um, table so I could just click that put in any value I want and of course it takes the value um, from the user interface which is really uh, a neat way to basically parameterize inputs to shaders so how do you do something interesting well in the next video, I'm going to talk about lighting and all about how lighting works. Um, just for getting our feet wet in this video, I figured we'd do something a little easier than lighting um, and basically just try to make this thing look uh, somewhat 3D because the default shaders look 3D and this one doesn't and that's kind of lame. So the easiest way to do something like that would basically be to use the normal. So we have the invec4 position, and as I mentioned in the last video, if you wanted to, 
you can bring in the normal as well. And by doing that, you can use the normal to provide um, information to your shader that you might need to do interest in shading. So I'm just going to pop into edit mode here and show you what the normals look like. Basically, they are perpendicular vectors at every single point on the surface that shoots right off of it, which is um, good. So what I'm going to do is use these to provide really basic shading to the um, surface. So these normals are in object space, um, which is useful in some regard, but it would be more useful to have the normals in um, view space, um, or even screen space for that matter. And in order to do that, there's a special matrix. Uh, it's another um, system matrix, and it's called the normal matrix. And what the normal matrix basically does is it does the same thing the model view projection matrix does, <clears throat> but with the extra caveat that scaling is handled in a way that's more sane than, um, than it might be when you just multiply a normal by the regular model view projection matrix. So what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to create a VEC3, and it's going to be called T normal for transformed normal, and it's going to be the normal matrix times the input normal. And you'll notice that it expects um, to be operating on a VEC3 because it's a 3x3 three three matrix, so I just do normal that XYZ, swizzle, and now I have my T normal. Now that I have my normal in essentially what is screen space, I can determine <clears throat> whether or not the Z component of the normal is facing towards the viewer or not, and how much of it is might be able to affect the color of the surface. So my output is vertex color, and that's essentially going to be the color that is going to be computed for the vertex, and eventually the, uh, the pixel itself. So if I try something fancy here and maybe do vertex color is equal to T normal dot Z, let's see what happens when I build. Well, for starters, it doesn't like the fact that vertex color is expected to be a uh, VEC4 and T normal is just a regular color. So maybe what I'd like to do is set it equal to solid color times T normal dot Z. <clears throat> now, that simple little stupid calculation automatically makes this object look much more 3D. Now, why is that? It's because T normal Z is essentially how much of the surface is facing towards us or not. And on the edges, it's going to be more dark. And towards the center, it's going to be more light. And as that number approaches 1, it's just basically multiplied by solid color, which is, in our case, we've set the blue here. I can change it all I want. Be whatever color that I want to set it to. And as it goes off to the side, <clears throat> the Z component of the vector is basically, um, you know, almost zero. Now, it could be negative, and since colors can't be negative, a safer thing to do would be to put FABS around this, or just regular ABS, sorry. And what that does is make sure we have the absolute value of the uh, Z component. So if it happens to be negative, um, we're still covered. So we basically are just getting the magnitude of the Z component and multiplying the solid color by it. So with just one line of code, we took in the most simplest solid color shader possible and essentially done which would be the most simplest form of shading on it, which is to just basically use the Z component of the light space or uh, view space normal to determine whether or not the surface is facing towards us or not. And what's really neat about this is now that we have this shader in place, we can apply this shader to any surface we want. So if I add a piece of text to the scene, I generate a 3D model of uh, text called test, and I apply our shader to that, we basically have the exact same um, algorithm being ran on this surface instead of the sphere. So it holds up pretty nicely the effect um, for just the most basic kind of lighting, or I don't even want to use the word lighting, but shading you can do. So this kind of gives you an idea of how you can use the shader builder within Virto Studio to practice and play around with concepts um, 
to accomplish whatever effect you want. And basically, all we've done in this video is we've taken the uh, or taken the um, light uh, model space normal, which is basically a vec four, which is x, y, z, and zero because it's a vector. Um, well, it almost doesn't matter here. And we've multiplied the normal matrix to transform it from model space all the way to view space or screen space. And then we've used the Z component of that transform normal to determine whether or not it's facing us to perform simple shading. Um, I just wanted to do this video really quickly to kind of introduce you guys to how to edit shader code uh, in a real world situation. And um, that's basically it. Uh, I'm going to talk about more advanced lighting and how uh, advanced lighting works in the next video. So that's it. Thanks.